So here's another medium that I've never heard of, has a massive following, a hundred and something thousand subscribers. She's a celebrity medium, which is fairly common, I guess. You know, celebrities are notorious for being, well, public figures and people are curious about their lives. We don't have royalty here like they do in England. And uh, so we just go over and over fawning over people's lives. And if they've died, especially in tragic or suspicious circumstances, then we just can't let up. I find it pretty sad. Um, I'm not really into that kind of culture. I'm not into celebrity world. I really don't care who's sleeping with who and who's, whose baby daddy is whose and who it, it's, it's really boring to me, but you know, some people just absolutely adore this. I don't know why. I'm sure there must be reasons. So this person we're going to look at today, her name is Sloan Bella. I have no idea who she is. No clue. Um, this was sent over by somebody on who follows our channel. And um, it's about P. Diddy's, P. Diddley's, which is Puff Daddy, the guy who was just had somebody file a suit against him his longtime girlfriend he was with for about 10 years she sued him and accused him of all sorts of horrible things and then almost the next day they settled the case and of course it'll be all quiet nobody's going to be allowed to talk about it at all i looked up this guy puff daddy he has seven children with i think five different women or four different women one set of twins and he had a hard life his father was killed dealing drugs i believe or he was sitting in a car when when puff daddy was only two they called him puff because he kept he held his breath a lot when he was a little boy and he was raised in harlem and i think he went to college and he's pretty wealthy he's had all kinds of endeavors and i have a cat as soon as, as soon as i sit down here she wants to be on my hands because i'm sitting still in one place who could have predicted that? Now, come on. So let's look at this video. Never seen this woman, like I said before. She talks a lot about celebrities of all kinds, and she's very good at describing circumstances. Now, keep in mind, she's making this up. There's no way she knows exactly the death of some celebrity, I mean, to the moment. I think this woman would be really good at writing writing fiction she should she should do uh mystery novels uh i think she she'd do a fabulous job of that but that's just my opinion she'd rather channel people that um she have lives that uh, she has not got all right let's look at this video i will be putting the full video in the description of this video in case you want to watch this in full but i've chopped it up a little bit because it's 30 something minutes and i just don't want to have to watch it again and i don't think you guys need to either it's a lot of gibberish in here from time to time so let, let's let's start hi everyone i'm sloan from sloanbella.com and i am back with another energetically channeled celebrity video now this one is one i tried to do yesterday and was interrupted profusely and i must say rather interestingly by a young woman who stood in the corner of my studio with her arms like this crossed over kind of giving me the what are you going to say that's of interest look energetically challenged oh no i'm sorry energetically channeled by the way <laughs> okay so i i'm listening to this today and I was thinking, since I'd never heard of this woman before, I'm thinking, is she doing this in front of a studio or something? What does she mean? There's she, there's all these people and there's a person off to the side in the corner with their arms crossed, giving her that look. What, what does she mean by that? And she tried to do this video yesterday and she couldn't because the person was giving her the stink eye. And then as I'm listening to the video farther on, she's talking about seeing a dead person in, in the room and that the dead person's giving her the stink eye and not allowing her to go forward with the reading. So, right, okay. 
So she says she sees the person. She is looking at her. She can see her. That's quite a claim. Not feel her energy or all this other nonsense, but she's seeing a dead person. Right. Okay. Sure she is. Uh, her arms crossed. So, oh, come on already. Already I'm like, all right, let's go back. Let's see what else is there. Pisces rising with Neptune squaring the ascendant. The ascendant is our self. So she represented herself as a Pisces type person, 12th house energy. Remember that. Remember that charts overlap on top of each other. So our rising sign, even though it exists in the first house in the natal wheel, which is occupied by Aries, whatever sign is there, in her case, Pisces, has a 12th house residue to it. So okay, I left it in there. She goes on for like about five more minutes. I swear it feels like a hundred hours of this gibberish about houses and signs and and zodiological signs and astrology it is gibberish maybe it makes sense to her maybe it makes sense to other astrologers but uh no this is just nonsense and she's people think this is real if if you present it with confidence it feels real. And then people kind of stand around going like, you know, it's like that story. The emperor has no clothes on. Everybody's looking at each other going, I don't want to be the first one to say that this is, this is ain't right. Um, because those other people seem to all think it's okay. And then finally somebody says, I don't know what you guys are all saying, but that's nonsense. Or the emperor has no clothes on. Finally, somebody has the, has the ability to say that and, and, and is innocent enough or just ballsy enough to do it. And I'm saying it right now. That's gibberish. I don't know what she's talking about. I, I think she's just making it up. Maybe maybe she's got some computer program and she's memorized a whole bunch of stuff. But, oh, come on now. This is just silly. It, this is 2023. We don't run with star signs and astrologies and and pisces and and all that nonsense it, it's just no this is not real all right so it ain't real i shouldn't have to even try to prove it or validate that the claim is in her court let her go ahead and explain why that is that nonsense is real i don't have to prove it she needs to prove it she's the one making the claim that's what burden of proof is now, she passed away in Los Angeles, Toluca Lake, actually, in 2018 from pneumonia. Sound familiar? Yeah, from pneumonia. So I started to feel the energy around that, and immediately my eyes were drawn down towards the ground, immediately. This is just something that was so overwhelming to her and so uncalled for and so unexpected and my mind went straight to the kitchen counter in the house that she was in i don't know if she owned this house or was renting it i get a feeling like it was kind of i almost want to say kind of transitory for her she wasn't there a lot but i'm looking at this silver tin in the kitchen and it's a it almost looks like a mint tin but it's a bit thicker uh, I'm looking at the silver tin and I'm looking at it and it's open and she's putting something in her mouth and she's looking at her hands. So I don't know if this was like a mint that left color on your hands or if this was like some kind of chocolate in a tin can. I can't see any writing on the side, but I do see wrapping like shrink wrapping and she's showing me a shrink wrapping machine. So like how you make, I guess, gifts for gift sales or whatever people do. She's showing me this machine because I'm asking her, how did they get to the tin? So what she's showing me is that. So who she's talking about is somebody named Kim Porter. And she was an actress, I believe, and the mother of three of Puff Daddy's children back in the day. And she died of pneumonia in 2018. That's it. So this person here, this Sloan Bella, is going to accuse Puff Daddy of murdering this woman that he had been broken up with for years. And the Sloan woman is 
recounting the last moments of this woman's life. Actually, the last three months. It's pretty offensive. If, if she's just speculating, there's there's no there's no facts in this at all. She's just making it up. Possibly she, since she's one of these celebrity channelers and she's all tied into the celebrity culture, she may have picked, may have picked up some stories here or there about what the relationship had been like with Puff Daddy or what that, that uh, all those people who hang out together, that posse of people who um, that world, maybe she's, She's heard some things that have happened and she's just ex expanding it. But according to the coroner and according to her death, it was, she died of pneumonia, but this woman's got some other ideas. And I, I just, it's really offensive to be accusing people. I don't know this puff daddy person. He may be a very bad person. I don't know, but accusing people of things that there's you can't defend against i mean puff daddy can't go go and have a sue this woman it's just going to make it even worse it's called the streisand effect as soon as you try to shut something down the media gets a hold of it and makes it you know 10 times worse so it's best to just let this stuff slide i and and i'm sure this medium is not the only one i uh, celebrity culture and celebrity shaming you know the shaming celebrities for their lifestyle that a lot of it is fed by the media because they have to do more and more outrageous things to stay in the limelight, to stay relevant, to have their records sell or their videos sell or to get engagements. You have to constantly be upping your game because you want to always have attention on you, the spotlight on you. That's how you make money. That's how you, you get more gigs and so on and, and more cameras follow you around and so on. So you've they could be the sweetest person in the world, but the media has to, you have to keep engaging the media to stay relevant. I mean, if if they go around and open up libraries and volunteer to read to people in the hospital, they're not going to get the coverage they would as if they had had a, a, a fight with somebody in a hotel somewhere or, uh, you know, through food at a restaurant. That's going to get the media coverage. People are going to want to see what else you're going to do. I'm not trying to make excuses for these people. I'm just trying to say that it's unexcusable. You know, some people choose this life where they want to be a celebrity, but I, I, does somebody really choose this kind of exploitation? I mean, does this Kim Porter person who is the mother of his three children, is this really her choice is to be um, exploited in this way by this woman who is, um, you know, she's got thousands and thousands of views on her video. Is that really what they want to do? Anyway, so let's see what else happens because I think it gets not much better. When I see the nasal spray on the week before she died, I see it like a magnet. So a magnet with a red end and the magnet part, the gray at the end. And you know, if you do pencil shavings with a magnet, and you hold it up, the pencil shavings stick to it like that. She inhaled this up her nose, pencil shavings. And I don't know what is in pencil shavings exactly. I don't even know what it is anymore. But whatever those little particles of toxic metal are, are what was in the nose spray. That's kind of what I'm feeling. Can I prove it? No. I love that part. Can I prove it? No. You're right. You can't prove it. What the heck, lady? I, like I said, she should write spy novels or something. That's a lot of imagination she's got going there. Now, I, I'd never heard of these people before. As I said, I, I don't think I even knew who Puff Daddy was or maybe barely had heard the name. And uh, that doesn't mean that there hasn't been a lot of gossip going around or speculation about somebody's death. I mean, sometimes people just die. It, pneumonia can kill people. It doesn't have to be pencil shavings that was put in a, a in a nasal thing and then it was shot up in your oh, come on so i don't know i you would think that they would know you would think the coroner would have known right it shouldn't be like okay so <laughs> sorry her energy makes me laugh because she's so mistroubled <laughs> now her hands are down here on her hips <laughs> 
anyway, so so she is. She's saying she sees people. She sees them visually. Now, if you if that is what she's claiming, that's testable. Why she should be able to be tested to show what somebody who died what they were wearing. I mean, I'm sure there are people who know what other people were wearing. What was my mom wearing when we buried her? You know, can't you see that? Nobody would know that. I mean, unless you were to talk to one of my family members or something like that. But is she, but is it even that simple? Because is, can people change clothes? I mean, is, and why is she wearing clothes? Why is she appearing to her in a form? Why isn't she just energy or light or heat or, um, does she have to appear as she was at that age or could she appear at the at an as a teenager or a little girl or a baby could she appear as a lamb or you know a frog or i mean a flower that's speaking to her and when you get into this ridiculousness of mediumship where anything is possible always then you're you're at a point where um, it's unfalsifiable. In other words, there's no way of disproving it because people like this are never going to be tested. Of course not. And even if they did try to be tested or somebody attempted to attest them in some way, they would just get out of it by saying, oh, well, you know, that's not what she was wearing or she wanted to wear this other thing. And that's why you didn't put the right thing on her. Uh, did you, did this happen? Did that, you know, it's getting silly, just really silly, you guys to have these people pretending that they can talk to people that they can see the person it, it, if that was true if any of this is true we would have no missing people out there this woman would be going through and, and finding all the missing people in that area or in the world she, the, she'd be the most powerful person in the world and some government agency would have her in a bunker somewhere i mean i keep saying that but it's true if you could see and can communicate with dead people and look at them, you would not be doing a video with even a hundred thousand people, um, subscribers, you would be a billionaire or you would be spirited away to somewhere because that's so powerful. Think about how powerful that would be. You would be able to go and talk to people, um, who have recently died on battle lines and they would be able to talk. You could talk to them and you could see them and they could tell you what are the fortifications? What are the military codes? What are the, what are the weaknesses of this person? Where is it that they're supposed to be? I mean, you could find out all that information. If you talk to them in a war, in a war situation, you could talk to um, people, political leaders and say, who actually assassinated you? What was the mystery behind this? Because now you can solve that. But she's not. She's working on celebrity stuff that's just making stuff up that she's probably read off of Wikipedia or off the internet or heard as gossip somewhere. It's not factual and it's disrespectful for people. It is extremely disrespectful to the family members who who remember her and love their fam, you know, their mother. This woman leaves behind three kids. Do you think that's respectful to her? To her memory? Do you think the kids want to see? videos splashed around of their of some some lady some person who says she's channeling her mom no that's not that's not kind that's not meaningful that's that's exploitive all right so stop already stop people but no there's a lot of money in this people are watching that video because you know nope 10 people watch mine 100 people watch my video you know it's 10,000, 100,000 people watch hers because I'm just saying it's not a good idea. It's not healthy. And she's like, oh yeah, let me tell you what color nail polish she was wearing, you know, whatever. Like that's important. Okay. Let's continue. Not just who people think orchestrated this, the baby's daddy, but other people that betrayed her. So I can't trust anybody. I can't trust anybody. I She can see but when she was alive, she couldn't trust anybody because somebody betrayed her with the cameras in her house. And that tin can has something to do with it. 
I cannot see what it holds. You know what I think it holds? This is a weird thing to say. I think it's an old school tin can. I'm seeing something orange on the cover. So I think it's like old school cough medicine or cough throat drops. Like old school. Like powdered something in them. Powder, like powder on them. It looks almost like a candy your grandmother would have. <laughs> I should say my grandmother would have had. Looks like a candy, but it's for your throat. Okay, so she's going to go on and she's going to talk about this unsubstantiated claims that this woman was actually murdered by P. Daddy because she had these manuscripts. She's supposedly writing a, a tell-all book and the manuscripts are scattered all over the place and somebody, some white guy, I think, has the manuscript and some others are with a phone. You know, she has a phone that was hidden and there's these cameras hidden in the house that... Uh, Puff Daddy had put in the house to surveil her, I guess, because he knew she was writing a book and that um, he killed her. He had her killed because she was going to write this tell all book and that she had um, he killed her by putting this something in the cough drops or the the spray she was using, the nasal spray. And that's what happened. And oh, give me a break. OK, let's see. Let's see what else. Somebody from outside that circle has one of, quote, the books or manuscripts or written documentation. So they don't have it all. And it's she's kind of laughing because she suspected that this would happen, but it blew her mind when it happened. Okay, so she suspected that she was going to be murdered, but she was surprised that she was murdered. Okay, that makes sense, right? So again, with the speculation and throwing aspersions to people who are not here to defend themselves, and even if they did try to defend themselves, it would just make a media circus even further and make this video go even more viral. So when you're a celebrity, celebrity you can't win. You just can't win this kind of thing. I, you could be the sweetest, nicest person in the world. And if you get somebody like this vicious enough that wants to go after you, nothing you can do about it. Nothing, not a thing. Your kids just have to take it. Tough up, I guess. It's, it's just cruel. The other thing that now I'm developing an eye twitch again, every time I try to tell a story, my eye starts to go like this. So I have to assume something happened with the left side of her face and with her eye and what's behind her eye because my eye keeps doing it when I'm talking about her. And all day yesterday I tried to film this and then my eye kept twitching and it's still twitching. So I feel with her that there was something like that. I also know that one of her best girlfriends, she has several, maybe three, one of her best girlfriends. Okay, so she's going to start talking about, and I skipped all this. Like I said, if you really want to watch this video, you can watch the video. The story is, is that she told her best friends the, about this abuse um, that she was having at the hands of uh, Puff Daddy. And... At least one of the girlfriends went and told her husband, the friend's husband, about the abuse that she was, that her other friend, Kim, was having with Puff Daddy. And so now that Kim is dead, Kim is trying to tell her best friend somehow, she's dead, so I don't know how she's telling her, not to either tell her husband but I think she's also saying that the husband already knows and the husband's still friends with Puff Daddy. So it's a little confusing. Uh, if Puff Daddy already knows and he's already killed Kim, then um, I don't know, maybe they're trying to get this manuscript or something that is supposed to be a tell-all book and somebody's got it somewhere. And I don't know, maybe there is a tell-all book. It seems like that might be something that could happen if you're, with a celebrity for years and years and have three kids with them. Maybe you do tell a, a, a tell all. I'm sure their life is quite interesting, way more than um, adventuresome and interesting and probably mine is. So I, I don't know. This is so like crazy. I am being shown November of 2023. So her death date was November 15th of 2018, but I'm being shown November of 2023. I don't think we're done with this. I feel she's shaking her head yes before she stare at me, then she wait, and now she's shaking her head yes. I am being shown 
that things are being prepared. She is showing me a trumpet. People are standing straight up. And there are people going to speak, not just about what happened to her, about other things. Something is unraveling. For some reason, she's showing me like, was one of her kids, I wonder, in band? Because she's showing me like trumpet marching band type music, which is weird because I don't think that that's her favorite. But I'm being shown that. Somebody is leading the march, leading the way there. That's what it is. Somebody is leading the march, leading the way to uncover this information and I'm getting five months. So I feel, I feel, I feel, sorry, I keep laughing because she's like out with it, out with it. Toxic metal exposure. Toxic metal exposure through some kind of metallic something, metal, that's like a, like a, Pencil shaving. So think of how tiny that is. And it went in through the nasal cavity. Through a sniffer thing. For colds or for allergies, whatever. Um, nose spray. And it was tampered with. So many things were tampered with. Oh my God, her phone was hijacked. She had a second phone, by the way. And nobody got that phone. That phone is hidden. I don't think anybody knows where that phone is because she didn't tell anybody before she passed. But she had a second phone. So conversations about what's going down and coming out were done on a quote burner phone sounds like a drug deal but it wasn't a burner phone so she has no idea that they've not found this phone because this phone they don't know where she hid it and she didn't hide it in her car and her stuff or anything like that she went to get it it's somewhere where she went to get it you know what i think i think she has she's like no don't say it but i'm gonna say it I feel like she has either a post office box, a, 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 a bank security box, a, a, a something storage box that nobody knows about. And it'll be found, but I feel like she was hiding things there. I don't know why nobody knows about it because, I mean, it's great if you're hiding stuff until you drop dead, and then, then what do you do? But I feel like she has this. Well, <laughs> where do we go with this? So. Uh, you know, earlier today, my eye was really twitching really bad. And I'm thinking to myself, is that Kim Porter trying to get a hold of me? Is is it, or, you know, <laughs> please. So um, when you see a prediction like this, okay, this was recorded in June of 2023. In November of 2023 to the world of people like myself reading the New York Times or the Washington Post or whatever it is we were doing, we saw that this man, the Puff Daddy guy, he was accused of horrible things by a woman he was with for 10 years. And she filed a suit against him, sued him. All these bad things were starting to come out and almost the next day they settled. And now it's probably going to, you know, she can't speak because if it's settled, she's going to get a lump sum money and he's not going to tell anything more. And that's the end of that. Now, of course, there's going to be tons of rumors going around about what she would have revealed and so on. So this woman who just sued, it might have been a surprise to people like myself who doesn't didn't know who Puff Daddy really was or to other people who didn't know who he was. But in the world that they're in. And I was just reading the Wikipedia page for Puff Daddy. And I was reading the Wikipedia page for the actress who just sued him last week. And I was reading through some TMZ and some other articles. There's been gossip floating about this Puff Daddy guy for years. And <laughs> this is not a surprise that there would be violence or that there would be retribution or baby daddy mommies and baby mommies and all kinds of stuff like that. And it, it it isn't unusual that there would be all this kind of drama. Um, so when you're retrospectively, here we are in November, after the date she's talking about, this is November 18th, 2023. And we're listening to this medium's video that was done in June. We say, oh, wow, she was right on. She she got, she, this is exactly right. Here it is, November, just like she said back in June, that there would be these 
trumpets, you know, people would be talking about Puff Daddy and, and revelations and tell-alls and her kids in a marching band and, and singing the song to the world and all these things. Of course, it sounds like it fits right now. But if it was June of 2023 and, and we were listening to this video, so if we were to go back in time, not knowing what we know now, would would what's happening now make any sense? Not really, because in June of 2023, she's making this, this medium is making it sound like there's going to be a tell-all book that's revealed by Kim, who was his previous, um, the mother of his three children, and that she has this tell-all book and it's been hidden somewhere and that she was poisoned by um, Puff Daddy with some kind of uh, lead poisoning that was in a little bottle when she had nasal problems and it got into her nose. I mean, what if what if she wasn't the one that had that happen to her? What if it was one of the kids? Do you think Puff Daddy would risk that? Do you think he would risk putting or having the substance put in her home? And the kids might not get it or the housekeeper or a nanny or, you know, somebody else might have stumbled across it and got and died from it. Do you think that he would have done that? I mean, I don't know, but that's that seems like a it just seems like a big deal. If you're going to have your somebody killed, you would just do it in a different way, not try to make it look like pneumonia. So anyway, the the and what's a big deal of a tell all book coming out about you? The guy, the guy will probably be much more famous. Tell all books about the scandals you've had and women you've slept with or men you've slept with or or whatever isn't such a big deal anymore it's not like he's running for public office ah that would probably actually make him might even get him elected to public office so is that such a big deal enough to murder somebody murder somebody you loved and the mother of your three kids is that really worth it i don't know i think i think she's reaching here a lot so anyway going back to june of 2023 it doesn't sound like what she's talking about, what we know now, because in June of 2023, she's talking about Kim and possibly somebody else standing, coming up and, and coming forward. But what she's referring to, at least the way I interpret it, is that these manuscripts are going to come forward and somebody's going to bring the manuscript forward and they're going to be the person who is doing the tell-all and then and then um, all this information is going to go out there what happened to Kim and how he threatened her and possibly might have murdered her or whatever but that's not what's happening is another love interest of Puff Daddy sued him and now they have they can't speak about it so there's no you know relevation revelations or anything like that it's it's going to be all hushed up I mean, of course, people are going to be talking and gossiping, but the woman who accused him and settled with him almost immediately, that's that's done. She can't talk about him anymore. At least I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, why would you pay a huge settlement to somebody to settle this up? And then she would still be able to talk about it. And it's been 2018 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five years, and this manuscript hasn't come forward. If there even is a manuscript that this medium is talking about, you know, maybe there is a manuscript, but it's been five years and nobody's found it. Even though the medium's talking about, oh, it was in a safe deposit box or it was in uh, with a burner phone or it was in a locked box somewhere or something like that, and they haven't found it yet. It's been five years. When you die, if you have a safe deposit box, that's one of the first things your next to kin is going to look for. They're going to go and try to look for those kinds of things. They got to settle the affairs. They got to look and find a will. They have to look and see if they have a power of attorney and all. There's a lot of legal things to deal with. So they go through that. It gets settled. It's not like there's a, you know, a missing safe deposit box out there. Because here's the thing. You know, my mom's day, they had safe deposit boxes. Nowadays, it's not such a common thing. I mean, I guess if you had jewelry or something like that, but papers and stuff, they're just scanned or they're kept or, or, or whatever. But safe deposit boxes, you have to renew. 
you have to pay for that. It's in a bank or, you know, a post office, some, some secure place. So you renew it. You, you pay money yearly. And it might be one of those things that revolves in your checking account. It just takes the money out. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So maybe she doesn't have to renew it all the time, but usually banks do know that you've died because like I said, they have to settle that up. The estate has to be settled. And when you, when a, if the children didn't know about a safe deposit box, okay, entirely possible, right? But what happens is you get a hold of their bank statements. If your parent was to suddenly die, you're going to get a hold of their bank statements going back a year or two or more. And you're going to look at those bank statements to see what's what's been passing through there so that you can settle up debts. So you can see if there's an insurance policy you didn't know about. Um, you're going to get reminders from from banks or other places saying, you know, your your social safe deposit box is up for renewal now, and we're going to just renew your account. So, I mean, these things would have been discovered, especially five years later. We would already know this by now. If there had been a manuscript out there, it would it already be out. So, you know, I'm I'm not saying that it couldn't. You know, maybe in 10 years, maybe something will be found. Maybe she buried the manuscript and it's somebody's going to find it when they are digging for a new hot tub or something. it's just silly, right? If she's got three copies of this manuscript and they're in three different places and three different people know about it, somebody would have already pulled that out and made it made it famous by now. So in retrospect, it looks like just looking at it from November, 2023, it looks like something's happened and it looks like she's predicted something. But in June of 2023, it didn't look at all like what is happening now because there is no tell all right now. There's no book, no man. Is, there's nothing that says he murdered his, um, his ex. None of that. So let's see what else. I'm getting near the end, hopefully. Feel... <laughs> Sorry, I keep laughing because she's like out with it, out with it. Storage and this paperwork in storage. After her passing, she can hear him and she can see him. So if you think that you have sent her away or that you're keeping her bound, because she's basically saying that something is being done by this person whom she had children with, three of them. She is saying that he does things in order to keep her energy at bay because she's around. <laughs> I've got to tell you something. Okay, this is pretty funny. I think it's funny, ironic. She goes like in my face, she goes boom, like that. Okay, like a cartoon. And the reason she's doing this is, and now my eyes twitching again. Okay, the reason she, <laughs> look, I can't stop it from twitching. Oh my God. Every time I talk about her, my eye twitches, it gets out of control. And I, you know what? She may have had a seizure and hit the ground. That's maybe what she's trying to show me. But she acts like she's trying to scare her ex. She is around him energetically quite a bit. She watches him. She sees what he's saying. She knows what he's doing. It's very, very transparent to her and you can't fool her. And you are going to stand so noted accountable within the next five months. He's trying desperately to backpedal out of this, but whoever that man is, and it's a white man that has the tape or the information or how, however that is, one of the manuscripts with personal, private, written, handwritten documentation about what was said to her three months before she passed, what she witnessed, and the final straw that she couldn't take anymore. And it's not a case of domestic violence. It goes far beyond that and that. So it is domestic violence, but it's far, far beyond that. So she goes in a completely different scope. Five months. The time is being marked. Five months. So this is June. June, July, August, September, October, November. I'm going for November 15th. Or right around there. It's coming out. It will not be. You cannot keep this. She's literally, you cannot stop the truth. And she has, like, this is it. Yeah, that's all I I clipped. So you can't stop the truth, except that the truth is stopped because this case with this other woman is settled. So that's it. 
this idea that I mean, I, and I'm also thinking about what it might, must be like to be this medium if she really is contacting in communication with the dead. What would it be like that you can't function? How would you be able to function if you've got somebody floating in your face and saying "boo" right in your face, and then just floating around you or standing off in the corner, crossing your arms and like physical bodies around you? How would that even be? How would you? How would you? function how could you have a day-to-day -day life how do you go to the grocery store and do your shopping and you see these dead people standing around you i mean it's like that movie the sixth sense do is that what she thinks is going on because that's creepy and i think she should check herself into some place to get some mental evaluations because that ain't likely it ain't happening it's not real so in some of the clip that I took out, it was her going on about Puff Daddy being a mob boss. And there was another woman and how they, how it was just a bunch of random things that she was coming up with. It didn't really make a lot of sense to me. It could be maybe feel like you could attribute it to what's happened now with the new lawsuit. Of course, we don't know the details anymore because now it's settled. But it, it it could apply to a lot of situations, too. It wasn't anything that was very specific. Um, the person who sent me this video, he says that um, he's been trying to figure this lady out because she seems less crazy than a lot of the other mediums. And he, he's probably right. This woman does feel to me like somebody who is very imaginative, has a great creative memory. She should probably be writing spy novels or... Um, some kind of whodunits and stuff like that. I think she'd be very good at it. She's really creative, thinking off the top of her head. She's not talking to dead people. Um, that's just a fact, right? Okay, she's not. And for all the reasons that I've said and all the reasons that are on this channel, my point is she's very creative. She speaks well. She's spontaneous with her ideas. Very, very... Um, I think she really should probably do creative writing and um, maybe movie scripts or something like that. But I think it's wrong to exploit people's grief because there are people who still grieve for that woman that is dead. And to attack the character of this other man, even if he deserves it, she doesn't know. And it's just wrong to pile on to people. It, just, it feels like it's exploiting them. Um, I, I'm just, it, these kinds of things just make me very sad because every time I try to explain a video, I, I, one of these readings, every time, then people say, but what about this person? And then you say, okay, I'll look at that person. And they say, but what about this person? And then you say, all right, here's what's going on with that one. Here's what I think. Oh, no, but this person and this person and this person and this person, there's so many mediums out there that there's no way I can explain them all in every video and every reading they've done. At a certain point, you need to stop and look at, you know, look at yourself and say, how many, how many times can I do this? They're not real. There's no evidence of this. Burden of proof. The burden of proof is on the person making the claim. It is not on me. I don't have to do these kinds of channels. I'm not making any money at it. I think I've made $20 on YouTube videos. Um, things. I think maybe I'm up to $25 before taxes and all the views I have had on this channel so far, $25. I ca they can't even mail me a check until it hits $100. So, you know, think about how much time I do uh, put into these things in the research. Yeah, I know it's not the highest end video, but, you know, there's a lot of time in this. I'm on a plane to New Zealand tomorrow and I'm gone for weeks. So it, I've got other things I could be doing. I find this interesting, especially when I look at different, different kinds of types of mediumship. But really, it's not like I'm ever going to prove this. You have to remember that these people are making some wild ass claim and saying that they can communicate with dead people and they're not offering any proof. So I, I want to learn, I want to understand what's going on. And I want to do this with you, the viewer out there, 
I find this interesting, the psychology of mediumship. And I hope you do too. You're watching this. I hope you do as well. I I think that we're knowledge is power and having this knowledge of the tricks of the trade, what it is that makes us think that we are hearing something that's real. I think that's valuable. I think it's powerful. It's not just for mediumship, but there's other kinds of scams out there that I think the skill of learning how to listen to what they're saying, not to be trusting of just somebody saying something that doesn't, she said it doesn't mean it's real, right? So if she wants to come back and say, well, she'll never look at my video. Of course not. If she wants to come back and say, oh no, uh-uh, that girl, she don't know what she's talking about. Well, then show me, let's see it. Don't just say there's no way that, that I could be correct. All I'm saying is that you were offering no evidence. You even said it yourself. It's just speculation. It could be gossip for all we know that you've heard and picked up somewhere. I don't follow these celebrities. So I don't know. Even if I followed these celebrities, I don't know. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. The burden of proof, the burden of proof. They're making the claim come through with the goods or, you know, admit that you really don't know what you're talking about. So please leave me comments. If you want to email me or contact me on Facebook Messenger, that's fine. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm gone for about three weeks. I have no idea where, what my life is going to be like in the next three weeks, but I'm going to be attending two different conferences, one in Melbourne, Australia, and one in Dunedin in Australia. I have a bunch of different meetups. I'm, I'm going to be doing um, to different kinds of groups, smaller groups. I have a really busy itinerary coming up the next three weeks. It's going to be beautiful. I'm really looking forward to going to Australia and New Zealand, seeing some of my friends over there and meeting new people. If by chance you happen to be um, watching this and you're in New Zealand or Australia and you get yourself to these conferences, please do so. I'd love to meet you. It's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, we have so much fun at these things. This will be my third time doing this. Usually every three years, they invite me back. And the last time I was over there was 2019, right before the pandemic that no one warned us about. Not a thing. I fly home and then we start hearing about this COVID thing. <laughs> Nobody told us. They shut down Australia and they shut down New Zealand. Would have been nice to have some fore foreknowledge of that. But no, of course not. So thank you all. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for your um, subscription. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing, hitting the little alarm bell so that you will know when I have a video uploaded. And as usual, please leave me comments. I'll do my best to respond as I can as time permits. Thank you all.